Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Nicolo. Investigate some story and then finds out it's super weird. Like, okay, so these days I was actually looking at how Ubuntu Touch came to be and then be a bit less because, you know, Canonical actually dropped founding and support for Ubuntu Touch. And the more, <laughs> the more I discovered about the project, the more I was like, sorry, what? It's probably things that I should have known. I didn't, I do now. So the story of Ubuntu Touch starts on the 31st of October 2011. And it starts from a blog post of Mark Shuttleworth, I guess it's pronounced. And we gotta talk about this guy. You probably know about this guy. Fun fact, I just discovered about him. And I was shocked. So, okay, first, in 2020, he was estimated to be worth 500 million dollars. Um, pounds, sorry, actually. And that already was quite a shock. And he has like a private jet, which is called Canonical One, tells you anything. And is actually, he actually started Canonical, is I think the founder, but he was, uh, for sure was the CEO for most of the time. He actually stepped back during the period of this time. He then got back uh, at being the CEO, which he currently is of Canonical, which is why I probably should have known about the guy, but I didn't. And he founded the Ubuntu Foundation, uh, of which he called himself the Benevolent uh, Dictator for Life, very similarly to what... Uh, the Python author did, and is he has always also sorry been a patron of KD, giving KD some uh, significant chunk of money back. Uh, the these times that I'm talking about, then I uh, stopped. I'm not too sure why I wasn't in KD at the time. Also, and this is pretty relevant, I think. In 2002, he actually flew to space. He paid. 20 million dollars which today are worth like 30 million dollars to go to space in a Soyuz and he stayed at the International Space Station and I got to read this quote that comes directly from Wikipedia yes this is my source it's Wikipedia don't don't say anything he also had a radio conversation with Nelson Mandela and a 14 year old whilst uh, being in the space station, and a 14-year-old South African girl, Michelle Foster, who asked him to marry her. He politely dodged the question, stating that it was he was very honored at the question before changing the subject. <laughs> this, this is amazing. I, ju I just imagine this person paying 20 million to be in space and then getting asked to be married from a 14 years old just after having talked to Nelson Mandela. How did I not know about this story? <laughs> Sorry. As I was saying, 2011, he posted uh, an article uh, whilst working, uh, you know, not at CEO, but for canonical product products. And he says that in his vision, uh, by Ubuntu 14.04, which will be released three years after the blog post, roughly, Ubuntu will power everything, like tablets, phones, TVs, smart screens, everything. And this will be powered by Unity, which was announced just the year prior. And Ubu uh, Unity was actually meant, uh, it says, to... Uh, to be convergent and to power up all kinds of devices. This is the kind of statement that you say aged like milk about, you know, <laughs> sadly, sadly. This Ubuntu Touch is uh, actually gets demoed by him at the 2013 CES, which is pretty significant. And it was baked in the 13.10 release, which means that it was indeed on time. So what was missing is, you know, being able to sell the thing on actual hardware that is actually pretty significant, like pretty important if you want end users to use your uh, operating system for mobile phones, because Ubuntu Touch is that, if you didn't know, you need to have the option of having a phone that you can just buy and it has already Linux on it. Otherwise, end users won't really care about putting them there themselves. So what did I do? Now, here's the second completely trippy part, which I didn't know about because I'm too young or something. Ubuntu tried to make the phone themselves. And to do that, they launched a fundraising on Indiegogo. And that already looks weird. So I thought, okay, how much money do you even ask to start 
mass producing Linux phones. And they decided to ask $32 million. And when I heard that, I was like, sure. <laughs> like Kitty he sometimes has troubles like raising, uh, I don't know, 15K K for projects like Kitty and Live, we, we managed to in a month. So that was very su successful, but $32 million for a Linux phone, nobody is gonna, like, no, no, let's be realistic, there was no way to reach that goal, $32 million. So I was like, okay, how much did they actually achieve? Like 10K, 20K, $12 million they managed to raise. And again, I was like, 12 million for a Linux phone? Wow. So apparently there were even companies like Bloomberg who donated $800,000 because they actually believed in a project that would make sure that the phones would be, wouldn't be, you know, a monopoly of just a couple of companies, but there will actually, would actually be an open source alternative, which is indeed super exciting. So what went wrong? Like you would say, okay, $12 million, that probably enough to make a phone, but the fact that they didn't reach the goal mean that all of this money was returned to whoever did this donation. So because the goal was not reached, none of these $12 million that were raised were actually of any use. They were all returned, which is sad, 12 million. So just to give you an idea of what this Ubuntu phone could have been, it's uh, the project name was called Ubuntu Edge. Again, if you have, I don't know, 10 years more than me, you probably know about the project, but let me tell you again, it was meant to be convergent also in the sense that you could plug in a monitor and whoa, it becomes an actual desktop operating system, similarly to what the Pine phone is also like trying to achieve the Librem OS, um, Librem phones. That has always been the idea. It should have been a dual booth with Android and Ubuntu mobile, which makes sense. You want to make sure that there's all of the options there to use all of the apps that you probably rely upon. Four gigabytes of RAMs, 128 gigabytes of internal storage, a screen that was 4.5 inches, 720 by 1280, which feels very 2013 because this happened 2013 and the price would have been $695. However, none of this happened. So what did Ubuntu Canonical do? So they again needed to have some phones that you could just buy and make sure that your hardware, your software, sorry, is in them. So they contacted hardware manufacturers and my personal guess is that the biggest hardware manufacturers like Len Lenovo, Blackberry, what, what were the hardware phone manufacturers in 2013? I don't know. Blackberry, totally, totally Blackberry. The biggest ones probably weren't interested in this technology and they preferred something that was done by a super big uh, company such as Google with Android or iOS where they can't have that. You get the point. However, however, they managed to get in touch with two hardware makers that promised to deliver uh, phones that were meant to be run with Ubuntu Touch. The first one is BQ uh, from Spanish and the second one is Meizu uh, from China. And this kind of worked. Both of them actually released phones and BQ also tablets that were running uh, Ubuntu Touch and that you could actually buy and use. I think currently there are some uh, devices that you can buy of this kind. However, it was clear that this was not quite the size that Canonical or Ubuntu were aiming for. So what happened is that in 2017, Mark uh, got back to being the CEO of Ubuntu and evidently some things had to change. I guess that these kind of projects were actually putting some financial stress on the company as well. At the end, your, your, your product is Ubuntu, you're not Google, sadly, you're not Apple. So I understand the idea of having to cut back some expenses. So they actually killed off both Unity and as a consequence, consequence, the Ubuntu Touch project. This was just five years ago, so you, you probably 
remember this. And I think that Mark actually gave a nice article about why this happened, how he was genuinely sad about this having to happen. And to be honest, I fully believe me, believe him. I do think that he, he was like interested in the project. It does feel weird that, you know, the fundraising was missed by $20 million dollars and he also spent $20 million to get to space, but that's irrelevant. He says, and I want to quote, I took the view that if convergence was the future and we could deliver it as free software that would be widely appreciated both in the free software community and the technological industry, where there is a substantial frustration with the existing closed alternatives available to manufacturers. I was wrong on both counts. In the community, our efforts were seen as fragmentation and not innovation and industry has not rallied at the possibility instead taking a better devil you know approach to those form factors or investing in home growth platforms what the unity 8 team has delivered so far is beautiful usable and solid but i respect that markets and community ultimately decide what uh, which products grow and which disappear and this kind of was the end of the project as it was led by Ubuntu and Canonical. But this was not the end of Ubuntu Touch as a whole, thanks to the efforts of UB Ports, which is a foundation actually that was opened in the same year, 2017, to continue the development of Unity as a whole and UB Ports. And they've, they've made progress. As an example, Ubuntu Unity is back to being an official flavor of Ubuntu, which you can download and use. And they've kept going and done a public beta of Unity 8, which was uh, currently being worked upon when in 2017, everything was shut down. So they have done project uh, progress. There's also lately a new variety of phones that run Linux and we've got uh, the Librem, the Pine phone, but also the Fear phone, which I totally love and I'm very sad that I never had the chance to buy one. These phones run Linux very natively, which is super cool. So compared to 10 years ago, we do have more uh, attention, I think, to the uh, mobile hardware manufacturing Linux open community. And there's also some more phones that were originally released as commercial Android closed source uh, phones that now people actually manage to install Linux on, which is also exciting. But I don't have anything else to say, really. That was my shook my shock like <laughs> discovering about the fundraising and about mark blew bl blew my word away I, I totally did not know about this to be honest it was an exciting journey and um, i wanted to share so thanks everybody for following along and as always see you tomorrow with yet another video of me doing things talking bye